Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5.30. We begin tonight with new information. Retina Lavalva, the woman charged in an alleged GoFundMe scam for Lake of the Woods boaters, has been rushed to a hospital. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The Sheriff's Department says she was detained at the Lake of the Woods County Law Enforcement Center yesterday evening, but later was transferred by ambulance to the Lakewood Health Center and then was flown out by helicopter to Bemidji Hospital. Lavalva was charged with two counts of theft after a GoFundMe account for three boater, boaters who perished on Lake of the Woods last fall raised around $27,000, but apparently around $7,000 from that account was never dispersed to the victim's families. Officers have cleared the scene where they were negotiating with a man earlier today. West Fargo police tell us there was a concern that someone with a gun was threatening to harm themselves. Police were focusing on a home in a cul-de-sac on 10th Street West in West Fargo, which is near the intersection of 19th Avenue and 10th Street. West Fargo Public Schools rerouted buses away from the area and say kids who lived in the neighborhood were kept at school until someone could pick them up. Police tell us they haven't located the person they are looking for but still believe there is not a safety risk to their community. Bond was set at $1 million cash for an Inderland man accused of shooting and killing another person on Sunday. Paul Miller had his first court appearance this afternoon for the alleged murder of 28-year-old Billy Holiday. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop has the latest from the Ransom County Courthouse. Increased security and tension. Both were high for the court appearance of Paul Miller. More than 20 people, both Miller and Holiday's family, filled the courtroom. Miller entered the courtroom in an orange Cass County prison clothes with messy hair and glasses. He kept his head down most of the proceeding. Miller did tell the judge that he does work on the family farm. No facts in the murder were discussed, just the felony charges explained. Miller faces life in prison with no parole if found guilty of murder, along with five years of prison time and $10,000 fine for reckless endangerment. Holiday's family was emotional when they discussed the charges. Due to the death here involved, the seriousness of the alleged acts and the indifference to the life of Billy Holiday, who was a person who lost his life, that a reasonable bond would be $1 million cash only. Bond was set to $1 million cash. Neither family nor attorneys will say what Miller's motive was for killing Holiday. Ransom County Sheriff Darren Benoist says the murder investigation is still ongoing and it is not known if any other suspects are involved. In Lisbon, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. Miller will be held in the Richland County Jail. The Ransom County Sheriff says the community is still in shock over the murder. Today's weather is a bit of a repeat from yesterday. Should we expect more snow tonight? Here's meteorologist Robert Hahn with more. Robert? We still have a few lingering flurries and very light snow showers over parts of the area. Those will continue to dissipate as we head through the rest of the night. However, parts of the area will see a little bit more snow as we head through your Thursday. More on that in just a few minutes. Right now, temperatures mostly in the single digits and low teens. Below zero up in Roseau, minus two there. Seven above in Devils Lake Langdon and Thiefer Falls. It's 12 in Fargo, Detroit Lakes and in Fergus Falls. Winds have been relatively light today, but just enough of a breeze to create some wind chills. Below zero in most locations. Minus one in Detroit Lakes. Two below in Fargo, Thiefer Falls, Roseau and in Langdon. We do have just that touch of snow I mentioned. That continues to slide off towards the south and southeast, and the trend will be this for this to finally dissipate as we head through the next several hours. As we head through the next few hours here in Fargo, through the rest of the evening, mostly cloudy skies can't roll out an isolated flurry or two, and temperatures slowly dropping on off to around 9 degrees by the 9 o'clock hour. Tomorrow, temperatures in the teens, much colder as we head through your Friday, but we've got some warmer weather and even more snow to talk about in that seven-day forecast, and we'll get to all that coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks so much, Robert. Mm -hmm. The body of a missing woman has been recovered and connected to a couple charged in a robbery spree. A body found in the Cheyenne River near Warwick, North Dakota, is believed to be Amanda Inkst. She has not been seen since October after last living in Warwick. Inkst's family, who lives in Breckenridge, reported her missing last fall. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson has the latest developments in this case. Eddy County Sheriff Paul Lies says the body was recovered from the Cheyenne River just south of Warwick, North Dakota. 
The sheriff says there was no vehicle in the river where the body was found and would not discuss specifics of what led them to search the river. He says an ROV, a remotely operated vehicle like this one, was used to find the body. Based on information we had learned, uh, we contacted the Jamestown Dive and Rescue Team who came up and used a remote ROV to search that area of the river where the body was located. Does it appear the cause of death was uh, natural? No. Cause of death was not natural, but it hasn't uh, been specifically determined yet? Correct. There's another twist in this story. Norman County Sheriff Jeremy Thornton says Amanda Inc.'s car was used in at least one robbery in Purley, Minnesota last year. Correct. It was just her car that was uh, used during the thing, and uh, she had no connection okay. to the robbery as far as we're aware of. And, and we're just okay. investigating her as part of the uh, reported missing person. However, the sheriff says Angst was an acquaintance of Billy and Crystal Herman, the couple charged with the Pearly robbery and others. The couple is now in jail facing numerous charges, but they were on the loose last fall when Amanda Angst went missing. Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Authorities are now waiting for the specific autopsy report. The case is being handled by several agencies, including the FBI and North Dakota BCI. A Fargo man is accused of abusing a toddler, made his first court appearance today. Court documents say Pittman Chiapu admitted to police officers that he disciplined a two-year-old by hitting him and holding him in a cold shower. But today, Chiapu pleaded not guilty to his charge of felony child abuse or neglect. Court documents say police officers were called to Essentia Health on December 31st for a child abuse report. The report says the toddler was repeatedly hit in the genitals, causing swelling and bruising. The child also had bruises and scratches on his face, chest, and legs. Chiapu was the boyfriend of the toddler's mother. The Holly Police Department is asking for help in identifying a woman they are calling a person of interest. They released two surveillance fo photos, as you can see here, of an adult female they are looking for. They say she is wanted in a shoplifting incident at Living Good on the morning of January 27th. If you recognize the woman in the pictures, you are asked to contact the Holly Police Department. Their number is on your screen, 218-483-4666. It can be hard to think about spring with temperatures like today, but time is running out to think about getting a tag for the spring turkey season in North Dakota. The season opens April 9th, and there are about 5,200 tags available for this year's hunt. If you want one, today is your last chance to get it. If you want to hunt in the spring season, you need to have a tag. And if you want to get a tag, you have to get your name into the lottery, and the lottery deadline is midnight tonight. The spring turkey season in North Dakota is open to residents only. You can sign up for the lottery online. We've got a link posted at valleynewslive.com. Just click on the hot button. Here's a modern spin on the tradition of receiving, cross, receiving a cross of ashes on your forehead on Ash Wednesday. In Rochester, Minnesota, people had the helpful option called Ashes to Go. Instead of sitting through a service, ministers from, a, from several local churches marked foreheads with ashes for an hour at a designated location downtown. Ashes to Go is a nationwide movement with a chapter in Rochester. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of a 40-day Lenten season until Easter Sunday. You will be hearing lots over the next couple of days about Giving Hearts Day. It starts at midnight, and it's a chance for nonprofit organizations and charities to raise money with the help of the Dakota Medical Foundation and its Heart Stay partners. All of these organizations are trying to get your attention to get a little piece of the donation pie. And here's an example of a group shining the spotlight on itself. The folks over at the YMCA organized a flash mob. It was great dance moves and what a performance it was. And so organization appropriate. The Y is one of more than 300 charities which are a part of this 24-hour donation blitz. Con contributions of $10 or more are matched by the Dakota Medical Foundation and its partners. Last year, nearly $7 million was raised. 
It's another wedding Wednesday, and just like in the fashion world, the trends for dresses are always changing. Bridal gowns are now having more lace sleeves and illusion backs. Special occasion dresses can be also found at David's Bridal. And mother of the bride dresses are starting to have less jackets and more shawls to easily take on and off. Stylists say either charcoal or pearl gray are great colors for mothers because it will complement all skin tones. Every Wednesday on the Valley Today, we are doing Wedding Wednesdays to help plan your next big event. Remember to send us your pictures with your wedding date and they'll be shown on Wednesday morning on the Valley Today.